guess who the Trump mob is going after now? Huh? Yeah, that's right. Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman, the uh, decorated Army Lieutenant Colonel, because Mr. Lindman told the truth, and the truth contained damaging testimony about Trump's conduct on that phone call with Ukraine's leader. So a couple of days ago, Trump stood on the South Lawn where he holds his press briefings now and issued an ominous warning. He said, referring to Lieutenant Colonel Venman, quote, you'll be seeing very soon what comes out, end quote referring to Lieutenant Colonel Vindman. Now, Trump wasn't more specific than that. He doesn't have to be because that sets his herd of pigs loose to go start chewing up the scenery and making shit up and getting it through social media. God, I'll tell you, I wonder if Mark Zuckerberg realized when he was a student uh, at Harvard that he was developing a program to destroy the world I wonder if he realizes it now. An attack on Colonel Vindman's character and motives was already making its way from the dark corners of Trump's social media following to the front lines of the impeachment battle, is the way the New York Times puts it. One day earlier, the right-wing asshole named Jack Posobiec had retweeted a lengthy thread by a Florida man. It's always Florida. You notice this? A Florida man, a guy who is a fan of QAnon, that fringe conspiracy about the deep state. Anyway, this tweet claimed to have witnessed, witnessed Colonel Vindman, quote, bash America end quote, in a conversation with Russian officers during a joint military exercise in Germany in 2013. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Now, the accusation, of course, is bullshit. It was unsubstantiated, has been rejected by some of the colonel's colleagues, Colonel Minman's colleagues. Even so, this little Florida cockroach, Prosobiec, Prosobiec, Sobiak, the right-wing commentator. His post was retreated by Trump's bastard son, Donnie Jr., driving it through conservative social media circles and Sean Hannity's filthy little mouth and onto pro-Trump websites whose stories the Trump bastard, the younger one, promoted to his four million followers. Yes, Donnie Jr., that little scum sucker, has four million followers. Donnie Jr. posted this about Colonel Vindman. And Vindman, by the way, had testified that he was concerned about the United States linking military aid to Ukraine with an investigation of Trump's political rival. But this is what the bastard Jr posted, quote, anyone who's been watching for the past three years is not at all surprised that this would be their star witness. You little fucker, you. Oh, my God. Colonel Venman has more dignity and courage and honesty and truth and morality and ethical behavior uh, in his right baby toe than the entire Trump family has in every single splotch of their poison DNA. But never mind. And the Times reports, while well, the White House has scrambled to mount an organized response to the House impeachment inquiry, Twitter has become the Trump war room. He doesn't need anybody. He knows how he's a very stable genius. Trump and his supporters, including his fucked up family, have used Twitter to frame his defense, torch his Democratic inquisitors, 
and try to undermine public officials like Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, who have testified against him. You don't testify against the head of the crime family and live to tell about it, one way or the other. As the Times reports, it's hard to figure out how six-year-old comments attributed to this officer affect the veracity of his, his testimony. Well, they're not trying to negate his testimony. They're trying to negate him, Vindman. Vindman's testimony, of course, aligns with that of other witnesses. But this is what they do. By questioning Colonel Vindman's loyalty to the United States, Trump fascist foot soldiers are spreading the story uncritically to millions of Americans to leave the impression that somehow Colonel Vindman is not to be believed. We, we, we really are in the thicket here. You know that, don't you? We, uh, I frankly think it's getting very close to the time to stop talking and Well, before that, I would say stop talking and millions of us take to the streets. That's the intermediate step, just short of violence. But I don't think the American people, I, I, I don't think there are enough of us, have the concern or, or the disgust or the contempt or even self-respect or respect for our country to put millions of us in the street. I think most people are just, ah, fuck it, I don't care. Yeah, fuck it, they're all the same. That's a pretty uh, upsetting thought to me. How about to you? The attack on Colonel Vindman emerged Halloween night when a retired army officer, somebody named Jim Hickman, <laughs> claimed that he had overheard Colonel Vindman laugh about, quote, the Americans not being educated or worldly and talking up Obama and globalism. Oh, really? To the point of uncomfortable, end quote. Now, this guy, this Hickman, Jim Hickman, said he took the major. At the time, Colonel Benman was a major, and apparently Hickman was a senior officer. And Hickman said he took Benman aside and reprimanded him. Through his lawyer, Colonel Benman declined to comment on any of this bullshit. Mr. Hickman... A former lieutenant colonel himself, whose service record indicates he served in Afghanistan and earned a Purple Heart, at some point started to hang out with the QAnon crowd online. A review of his past tweets found more than 100 tweets in which he recirculated or commented on QAnon-related theories, including Satanism and pedophilia. <laughs> and until recently... He had the hashtag, hashtag Q in his profile. Reached for comment, Mr. Jim Hickman said he did not believe in QAnon, but found it, his word, interesting. Hickman said, quote, I do think it's actually been pretty accurate on predicting a lot of things, end quote. QAnon doesn't predict shit, you moron. Hickman is also tweeted strident pro-Trump, anti-democratic themes Hickman has written. And this is a guy who says that he heard Vindman say something nasty about the United States. But Hickman says, quote, it's incredible how evil the Democratic Party is. He's written that, Hickman. And a week before going public with his story about Colonel Vindman, he retweeted a Trump supporter urging 
all caps, STOP IMPEACHMENT, STOP THIS COUP! In a Twitter thread, Mr. Tri Hickman, the one writing, who says he's disabled from combat and he's living in Florida, said he had helped manage joint exercises in Germany involving the United States and Russian soldiers, and he met Colonel Vindman there in 2013. Colonel Vindman referred to himself as a patriot during closed-door testimony in the House last month, and he said he re reported his concerns about Trump and his inner circle's conduct out of what Vindman called a sense of duty. He received a Purple Heart after being injured by an IED in Iraq. He now serves on the National Security Council, Vindman. Several officials have publicly defended Colonel Vindman since his testimony emerged. Gen General Joseph Dunford, the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, has called the colonel, quote, a professional, competent, patriotic, and loyal officer, end quote. Michael McFall, the former ambassador to Russia, has said he had worked with the colonel, quote, and interacted with him in front of Russian officers. He never once said anything near what this so-called retired army officer claims, end quote. Now, where Hickman's story falls apart, Hickman says that he heard, uh, Hickman does not speak Russian. Vindman does. Vindman and the Russian officers in this joint exercise were talking in Russian. And the reason they were talking in Russian is because the Russian military officers, when they participate in these joint uh, efforts, as a matter of pride, they will not speak English. They will only speak Russian. So Vindman was talking to the Russians in Russian. Hickman, who reports this terrible thing he heard Vindman say, doesn't speak Russian. Greetings, truth seekers. It's that time of year again. Time to help your humble and obedient podcaster keep it lit by keeping the lights on in the Malloy studio with a podcast pledge drive. All October, we are giving away freebies, goodies, and gifts as thank yous for subscribing or renewing your Malloy podcast at the Trump recession level reduced price of $49 a year. It's a different giveaway each week, True Seekers. Everything from an autographed copy of Mike's book, Colored Ice Cream, to my holiday baked goods. Already have a Malloy podcast? Well, it makes a great gift. And remember, podcast subscribers also get exclusive access to the weekend bonus shows, which might be hosted by Mike or by me. We even have a teen show coming up featuring Molly and her friends. Just visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe or renew today. Keep it lit.